Hillary Coppola from Massage Pro CE and this is Massage School. I've created some video clips for you in order to help you master some of the techniques that maybe you've learned along the way but can't quite remember exactly how they were performed or maybe you just need a different approach. So I hope you enjoyed these clips and if you have any questions please contact me and I hope to see you at a continuing education class sometime in the future. Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to address this shoulder region here, the sits muscles. I love the sits muscles. And so if your client has um, limited range of motion, if they've had rotator cuff injuries, um, if their posture is rolled in and their hand is in front of their body, this is one of the regions that we're going to work, but we also have to remember we're always going to work antagonistic muscles as well to bring the body back in better posture. You don't want to just work in the back, elongating and softening these muscles because then we're going to create more postural distortion as the body is moving forward and we don't bring it into balance. So let's warm this tissue up again. Now a lot of times, you know, students are trying to work or massage therapists work deep tissue and they'll tell me their thumbs hurt, their wrist hurt and they can't give their client enough pressure. And a lot of what you need to learn is not how to work deeper, but how to work smarter, not harder, smarter. And that means we need to learn and remember how to access tissue, feel where the fibers are going, so that we can get into those spaces without having to push down so hard. So first we're just gonna start out and just glide across your sits muscles, your supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres, and subscapularis. And so while I'm just gliding through here, I'm paying attention, I'm palpating and feeling if there's congestion or tightness or if my client's telling me, ooh, that's a tender spot. I want to go up the other way. And you can see on this client, he's getting a nice response. He's getting circulation in there pretty quickly in most of the spots, but not all of them. And so the body actually shows you kind of like a map of where they're holding congestion or where tissue might be restricted or where scar tissue may be inhibiting the flow of the blood. So we want to come into this region here. Here's your scapula, you can see that right here. I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to gauge the pads of my thumbs right underneath here. And I could already feel some spaces in here where he's really holding on where it's tight and then it clears out over here. So did you feel that tenderness in there? Yes. Okay. So let's see where else we can find some spots. Again, instead of just pressing downward, change your angle a little bit Get on the side of that tissue. Client's going to feel it deep, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't have to work so hard. So we don't work hard, we work smart. It's going to save your hands, your wrist, and give the client what they're, they're looking for when they like that deep work. I also find by changing your angle, it's not that it feels deeper, you also access all those tiny little spaces, those places in between the fibers where fascia is and where trigger points actually might be located and lodged. So if we find a tender spot, is that tender in there? A little bit. A little yep. bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to hold it for about eight to ten seconds. We're going to wait for this to loosen. We could ask our client to let us know if they start feeling the pain decrease. Is that changing already for you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So usually in most people around four or five seconds you start feeling a softening or melting and then by 8 to 10 seconds, it's gone. Takes about that long for the body to get the message to the brain to bring those wonderful painkillers down in here and to release that trigger point. Is that tender in there? Yes. Does it refer anywhere? Nope. Okay. So we're going to hold this one again. Starting to ease up? Certainly. Okay. So how do I know it's easing up? Because I can feel the tissue actually opening. Okay, some people perceive it as heat, some people perceive it as cold, some people feel it as a gush of energy, 
So your information will come through in the way that you perceive things in your own body. So now I'm going to bring my hands up underneath the pecs and I'm under the clavicle. You could just relax. You don't have to help me. Drop the shoulder. So my hands are underneath here, but underneath the clavicle, and I'm going to glide through these pecs up around the anterior delt. Any tenderness right in there? Yes. Okay. So we're, we're seeing and feeling that there is tightness in those pecs, and it's associated to his condition in here in his shoulder. So we want to make sure later on that we turn him over and get the region in there and address that as well. I'm going to take their arm up, bring your hand underneath. You can just drop that and relax. And just place the whole shoulder joint in the palm of the hand. And then you're able to lift that scapula a little bit. Now, some clients are going to give you more access space than others. Get some movement in here. It's important to move the joints. A lot of times we leave our clients on the table stiff and still, thinking, oh, we don't want to disturb them. But you know what? You're not going to get the same therapeutic effects if you don't get the joints in motion. So bring it all the way up as far as it's going to go without pushing it beyond their limits and down. And then once you go in one direction, you can bring it back in the other. And relax. Okay, that's a few tips today for your sits muscles.